Hey guys, Montes Murman here, bringing you another video. So today I decided, today is the day that I make a video I wanted to make for quite some time now. Uh, that is a comparison between an older Suzuki and this uh, newer, I guess, Suzuki SE650. So this is my dad's spec. This is a 2009. Suzuki SV650 uh, naked model. Now I'll be comparing that to my 2002 uh, Suzuki SV650. So you can guys can see how similar yet different the older bike, the older generation is compared to the newer. To start off, uh, we can go to the dash here and just show a few of the features that are quite different between these two bikes. Now. This bike here is fuel injected compared to the 2002, which is carbureted. And it offers some of your basic features. So it would have your indicator lights, your neutral lights, uh, FI warning, an engine warning uh, light, as your even uh, light for when you're running low on fuel. Furthermore, you have your tachometer, you have your speeds, which is in digital. You can switch that between miles an hour and kilometers an hour. It has your temperature gauge and a clock, which uh, the 2002 SV650 does not. Um, the biggest change between the two bikes, while the, the cosmetics style is quite a dramatic change, uh, the engine is actually quite different as well. So, so in size and all, this engine is the same, but this is much more updated. Uh, offers a bit more horsepower it also comes with uh, oil cooling as well as well as dual spark plugs in each cylinder for the better fuel economy and throttle response and power delivery now as I mentioned before uh, this bike is fuel injected which means the power delivery and the throttle response is really great compared to the older generation which has a carburetor on it. However, while it runs well, it's fuel efficient, it has more power, it sounds a bit, in my opinion, worse than the carbureted 650. Me? Give off, gives off kind of tinny 125 sound, there's not a lot of bass. Um, however, it does have the advantage of the throttle response. But then again, it's not that loud. Now, make no mistake, both bikes are really fun to ride. Uh, they're really good off the, bat, off the, off the start. Of course, it says V-twin, so it's not going to have that top-end power. However, um, I do find that although I love my 2002 carburetor, and it looks nice, it's stylish, it's uh, it's fun to ride. But this, I find, is a bit more for the um, adventure-seeking, the the the, the thrill-minded, the adrenaline junkies. Just because of its power delivery and throw response, it's really nice to ride it around the corners at a faster pace than uh, the uh, first generation. And another thing about the engine is that while uh, both bikes wheelie and you can wheelie them if you practice, this one uh, tends to wheelie more. So off the bat, this bike this bike wheelies really well. My one does not. Uh, I don't know if that's because the power delivery, the throttle response, or what, but my bike does not want to lift up as high <laughs> of the start. And another thing to mention is that the carburetor, the first generation Suzuki C650s, their insides of the engine is laid out a bit differently. And when you lift the wheel up to certain degrees, it starves the the engine of oil and that can give you issues um, with your bearings in the future which my bike had so I had to change the engine 
because the clutch bearing went and probably due to wheelies and I had to change the whole engine because changing that, just that uh, engine bearing is a lot of work and it's not worth the hassle unless you have nothing to do and you have a lot of money and skill. This bike's styling is, like I mentioned, is quite updated. However, I don't understand one thing. You see all these sharp edges, even the, the frame itself, it's all sharp, pointy, triangular. And then you come to the front and you see that headlight. That's the old style headlight, the classic headlight. It just looks odd on this sort of bike. I don't understand why Suzuki didn't decide to put like a diamond shaped headlight like the uh, KTM Dukes have or something different, you know? But they want that classical headlight, I don't know why. If it's because, I don't know, the heritage, I guess. The bandits also have the circular headlight. Um, unless, of course, you get the fared model with all the fairings on it, then you have a dual headlight system. And of course, that bike, uh, my friend has one. And if you customize, customize it just right, it makes it look a bit like a super bike, more than a kind of like a tour naked sort of sporty bike um, so yeah off the bat uh, this bike's a bit quicker it's a bit more agile although it is heavier when you fill it up with all the liquids um, especially since my dad raised this bike the, the back of this bike it uh, drops down more when you put it on the stand and when you try to lift it up it feels a lot heavier than it should uh, because of that illusion that this bike's really heavy, although when you start riding it, it's really not. A couple of other things to mention, I guess, is that the back brake has been upgraded from the carbureted first generation. Um, of course, the engine, you have better fuel efficiency as well as cooling. And that can be a game changer for some people if you live in a really warm climate. Um, other things, the wheels are pretty much the same, nothing's changed there. Styling's changed, the fuel tank actually lost a liter of capacity, but to be honest that's compensated with the fuel efficiency that it has compared to the first gen, especially since mine is really badly tuned and <laughs> eats, absolutely eats um, and guzzles all the fuel. <laughs> within you know 100 200 miles that's <laughs> quite easily um, swing arm has been updated my dad put this nice RNG sticker on it it looks really nice has this metallic look and matches the, the end of it as well it looks like it's came out like that out of a out of factory but no that's a sticker so yeah guys as you can see this bike is quite similar yet different uh, with the first generation model and I'll show you why right now. So that's this bike done, talked about all the things that came to mind after all the riding and now moving on let's move to the red one. Voila there we have it guys this is my here's my sweetheart my beautiful SV650 curvy edition, that's like people like to call it. This is the first generation. Uh, yeah, believe it or not, since the last clip you saw, it's been about four months. <laughs> Those are able to like organize and get this bike here and film this now comparison video. Um, yeah, so here you have it, the uh, curvy SV650. As you guys can see, uh, very different in the looks, but not very really different internally. Um, same type of engine, as I mentioned before, V-twin, six, uh, 650 or 645 or 649 or 648, I don't know what exactly the CC is, but 650 doesn't come with a oil cooler, only a big ass radiator, slightly bigger than uh, it does in the newer models. Yeah, about the same top speed, stuff like that. Slightly uh, softer suspension than the newer models and also non-adjustable, so you're stuck with what you have unless you do some modifications on suspension yourself, which I will get to. 
Uh, yeah, as you guys can probably tell, uh, people who know SV650s, it's not stock. <laughs> There's a few modifications on it, and I'll go through them right now. So, we have your GV windscreen here. Uh, I'm not sure what bike it actually comes from or what bike it's meant for, but I imagine it fits a lot of bikes with this type of headlight. It fits also on the newer Naked as well. Which is actually where it came from, but uh, yeah, it looks really nice. That retro kind of screen and you know the tubular kind of curvy frame and stuff. I think it looks sweet. Uh, next we have the pe belly pan. I don't think the belly pan comes with stock SC650s. Uh, if, if, if you back in the you know 2000s, if you were buy them by brand new, you probably have to get them. Uh, probably have to get them aftermarket or something or it's probably like a big additional cost furthermore we have this bar here I have put on bar and mirrors because again retro look I'm trying to make this look as retro as possible with big ass fucking you know antenna mirrors it doesn't look that well yes the Lee Vince exhaust uh-huh titanium sounds really nice I'll fire it up soon uh, yeah, same goes with the fitting, same as all models, so you have to cut off the original exhaust around here and then that leaves you with the, the manifold and you just slide this on and uh, connect everything up and you have your aftermarket exhaust on. Uh, rear mod guard, I don't think again that the stock a Swiss 50 curvy comes with a mud guard so you probably have to get that aftermarket again or big additional fees been cut out parts have been cut out so imagine it's not stock it's an aftermarket one um, same goes with the the newer models the sharpies I like to call them because of the very angular frame and stuff but uh, yeah, same goes with my dads and my friends, they didn't come with the mud guards unless someone tipped them off and stole them off on eBay before they sold the bike or something. Again, uh, furthermore, <laughs> you have your brake lever here, this actually came from my, my highest in 125. Uh, this thing broke off and couldn't replace it, so we put on this highest in piece and this is... <laughs> It's a really big DIY job, but yeah, you have this long spring for the brake light switch, and you have your lever, which is actually from the high swing. You have this metal wire, which is holding this together, so I can use it. And the side panels, the covers, the seat cover. I don't, what are it, side panels, seat covers, whatever. Uh, not stock either. It's just a. Uh, kind of like metal mesh and then covered it up with the carbon fiber vinyl sticker thing uh, same goes with the frame here and on the other side's the same and also this SV650 cover here as well both put on a different uh, oil cap uh, doesn't really serve any purpose it shows you the temperature apparently but it's actually so short it doesn't reach the oil so it never shows you the correct heat it shows you like the air heat inside of the inside of the engine which is what well, you know it's like 30 degrees celsius in there but the oil i imagine is something like 60 70. um my seat is also falling apart as you guys can see all the knee downs really puts a strain on these seats especially if it's warm and dry it's gonna crack up and it's gonna you're gonna end up with holes so uh, just watch out the horns aftermarket this is a car horn single one put this on connect it up all good it's not really a modification but the engine is actually not original this is a i believe it's the second engine on this bike from another used SV650, actually came from an S model. It was about the same amount of miles, but my one was just falling apart, so it actually just gave up eventually, and we had to uh, get a new engine and fitment. Oh, that's uh, that's a whole other story. If you're gonna fit it, you're gonna need at least two people, three preferably. A lot of tools, a lot of patience, effort. 
Guys, look at me. Why you look at me? Mm hmm. Uh, indicators. Yes, aftermarket, of course. Also, the tail tidy. It's actually my dad's job, and he kind of did okay. But it was a big manure plate on it, and it's like sticking down here. So, I actually put my fingers to it and fixed it up a little bit because it was also falling apart. Uh, put a smaller plate on it. But yeah, just a visual comparison. It's a lot of different. Top speed's about the same, sounds about the same, sounds a bit deeper, more more Harley style <laughs> compared to the fuel injected models. Also put on Chinese aftermarket levers. Did the job really well, I've been around for all the year, had no issues. Ooh. Of course, the glasses modification sticks on here, hangs on really well, even during the motorway speeds and stuff. Repainted the uh, gas cap, uh, not a perfect job, but it was also falling apart, and scratches everywhere and stuff, and dings and stuff. Dings on the tank, dings on the forks, as you can see, if you're going to drive, oh, if you're going to drive behind someone, and they have race tires on, yeah, expect stones to fly in your face on your bike. Also this radiator grill, that's not stock either, comes with no protection whatsoever and putting it on is also a hassle. But yeah, the dash is very different. No, no water temperature indicator which is sad because it does have water cooling but you can't see the temperature only thing it comes up with is the still light when your engine's probably overheated or it's there's low water pressure or something like that same with the oil oil pressure light uh, it has a digital odometer so your miles and everything's all digitally done but the rest of it's all analog so your revs and your speed uh, this is actually an imported version, so it came in kilometers per hour and some dude in the past, some who owned the bike, put on stickers for miles an hour and uh, pro probably for MOT reasons. Yeah, but now let's fire her up. I did do a synchronization job on this guy and now it doesn't stall anymore, which I'm really happy about. Um, so yeah, let's see how she sounds. Yeah, as you can guys can hear, it's a lot more deeper tone compared to the fuel injection models. I love it. I really love it. I love the look of this bike. I love the sound of this bike. The riding style position is really great. It's a bit lower than my dad's black uh, fuel injector model. I think it's actually being lowered. I imagine at some stage in this bike's past, a girl has ridden it and she lowered the bike. And we just kept it like that, and <laughs> it looks great, uh, it rides great, easy to do knee downs on, etc, etc. So yeah. I don't know what else to compare, because it's been so long <laughs> since I made the video, or the clip, me comparing the uh, black SC650 to this. I have no idea what I talked about back then, but hopefully I covered most things. Uh, this suspension here, I almost forgot, is modified, uh, so the springs are modified, they're taken from the uh, same year, 2000-2002 GSX-R600, and they're stiffer, stiffer, more race-like springs, so you put them in there, uh, put slightly thicker oil and stuff like that, some good high-duty fork seals and you have yourself a more stiffer suspension something that will not throw you off the bike when you hit a slight bump on a band or something <laughs> oh it's a plus yes I have also dropped the bike on both sides before never a load uh, a low side or anything like that just dropped it off stationary from just foolish mistakes and stuff like that was also riding this during the winter, so you had some salt grit get into the metal parts and there's the rest. 
around some areas. I painted most of the areas, like the frame and below the bike here, like this was all rusty, but then they're black. We painted a lot, like a bunch of stuff around the uh, brakes as well. Used to be rusted up. But now it's uh, it's ready to go through another winter. <laughs> no problems. Very torquey bike. Really likes to wheelie. Swing arm is also slightly different compared to the old one. But I think the chain adjustment is actually better or easier. Because you don't have locking on certain things. You just have an Allen key to adjust your chain with. And uh, of course you get that carburetor or petrol smell. Which I think is a plus. <laughs> But yeah guys, if you think there's anything else I missed out, please do leave a comment and I'll try to answer it. If you want to compare the two bikes more in depth, I'll be happy to talk about it in the comments. But for now, thank you for watching. This is Cherry, my build of V650 signing out. And uh, I'll see you on the road. Peace.